Starship Super Heavy has returned to the orbital launch pad for the final stretch. Dragon returns to Earth. Falcon 9 completes multiple missions. And Falcon Heavy kicks off its busy launch cadence for 2023. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. been away for a couple of weeks, so let's catch up on everything that has happened since episode 361 on the 6th. Starting with the return of Booster 7 to the Starbase launch site on Sunday the 8th in Boca Chica, Texas. Again, hosting all 33 Raptor 2 engines, however this time with all of its shielding installed and ready to go. The Super Heavy first stage was lifted onto the orbital launch mount early the following day, and then just hours later, its upper stage, Starship 24, was also lifted by the tower's arms and plopped on top. SpaceX providing some gnarly drone footage of the full stack, prompting the Musk man to tweet, Starship launch attempt soon. We have a real shot at late February, but a March attempt appears highly likely. First, cryo tests and a wet dress rehearsal needs to be completed, followed by a de-stacking of the vehicle so the booster can finally perform its first 33 engine static fire. Then it's just a matter of restacking the rocket and waiting on the FAA to give the green light. SpaceX also shared a series of images of this first Starship super heavy rocket to attempt an orbital flight on the pad, in fact, it was just one of four of their rockets on four different pads at the same time, but we'll get to those later. The beast is so massive, it's licking ground clouds as it just sits there, Elon indicating that the company will construct about five more two-stage Starship Super Heavies during 2023. Later in the week, on Friday, and after a series of OLM fire suppression tests, Booster 7 was put through the previously mentioned cryo test as propellant was loaded into both tanks. A huge shout out to Lab Padre for capturing these events. Then it wasn't until Wednesday this week that a partial wet dress rehearsal of B7 was executed, only lasting about 45 minutes. Eagle-eyed viewers of Lab noticing some of the frost blowing away during the test. Could be something, could be nothing. But afterward, road closures for the rest of the week were canceled. However, at this time, next week's closures are still possible. On Tuesday the 10th, Booster 9 was transported back to High Bay 2 for engine installation, and its teammate, Starship 25, swapped locations with it, moving from the build site to the launch site on Saturday. It was hoisted onto suborbital pad B on Tuesday this week for an expected static fire in the near future. Last week, NASA divulged more details of their Artemis 3 mission, the first crewed landing on the moon's south pole using Starship HLS. Writing that SpaceX will be required to fly one uncrewed demo HLS mission to the lunar surface before the agency can sign off on the first crewed mission. And before any crew can launch from Earth to orbit on SLS, SpaceX will first launch a storage depot to Earth orbit, where a series of reusable tankers will carry propellant to the depot so it can be used to fuel the uncrewed HLS that will then lift off from the Earth's surface. After rendezvousing and refueling at the storage depot, the uncrewed HLS will make a six-day journey to lunar orbit and wait the arrival of the Artemis 3 crew. Once the crewed Orion spacecraft rendezvous with HLS in lunar orbit, two of the four astronauts will board Starship, undock and ascend to the moon's surface for their six and a half day expedition. Enough time for Orion with its two passengers to make a single orbit around the moon before reconnecting in near rectilinear halo orbit. Quote, during their time on the moon, the astronauts will do scientific work inside Starship and conduct a series of moonwalks, exiting Starship to explore the surface. The astronauts will don advanced spacesuits, exit through an airlock and descend on Starship's elevator. After their expedition is complete and they have lifted off from the surface in Starship and redocked with Orion, the crew will spend about five days transferring samples between vehicles and preparing for their return journey back to Earth and Orion, leaving Starship and NRHO. Before we move on to more SpaceX news, a word about our sponsor, Epic TV. You guys are obviously smart coming here for all your SpaceX news, but why stop there? Epic TV is a censorship-free video platform with original news programs and documentaries investigating critical issues not covered anywhere else. These days, SpaceX's CEO is pretty much a walking headline in and of himself. He's always in the news, especially for leading the way in exposing the vast corruption in America's public-private partnerships. So I recommend you check out Epic TV as an honest and accurate news source you can depend on to bring you first-hand interviews and on-the-ground footage of the most critical matters in society affecting our liberties, health, and safety. Because as Elon has written countless times, those things are of the utmost importance if civilization and humanity is to survive long enough to become multi-planetary. Stream Epic TV on your computer, phone, tablet, what have you, and you can do so using a special offer I have for you. Just sign up and start watching. No credit card required, no strings attached. If you decide to subscribe within 14 days, it's just $1 for two months. So why not give them a try, support our sponsor, go to watchepic.com slash spaceeccentric and subscribe. That's watchepoch.com slash spaceeccentric. Let's briefly move on to Dragon. NASA has announced Crew-6 is now scheduled to lift off from Kennedy Space Center no earlier than Sunday, February 26th. The four-person team consists of two NASA astronauts, one UAE astronaut, and the second cosmonaut to ride the Dragon. 
After arriving at the International Space Station on November 27th, the 26th Cargo Dragon resupply mission departed the ISS at 5.05 p.m. on Saturday, January 9th, splashing down under Schutzbra off the Florida coast on Wednesday the 11th with 4,400 pounds of scientific investigations and supplies. Also on Monday the 9th, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 mission for their Starlink competitor, OneWeb, delivering 40 of their satellites to low Earth orbit in three groupings. This arrangement was arranged following Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the subsequent throttling of Soyuz customers. The Falcon first stage flew for its second time, pulling off a landing on land at landing zone one. Landing light deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Then on Sunday last weekend, Falcon Heavy lifted off a couple of pads over from 39A at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, carrying a classified payload to geosynchronous Earth orbit for the U.S. Space Forces, USS F-67. Take a moment and appreciate the views during booster separation. So booster separation. It's rare we get to see an uninterrupted tracking view of these boost back burns. It's like they're painting the sky. Bob Ross vibes. I just love it. <laughs> you just beat the devil out of it. Both side boosters were reused from the Space Force's previous Falcon Heavy mission, USS F-44, and both also landed on land back at LZ-1 and 2. The core booster was expended. Stage 2 is on thermal guidance. Stage 2 FTS is saved. Booster landing like deploy. sight to see as we watch the Boom, side done. boosters touch down for landing. Elon commenting, and that's how we'll land on Mars. Okay. A few days later on Wednesday, it was Falcon 9's turn again, launching from Slick 40 for GPS-3, deploying the spacecraft an hour and a half after liftoff. The booster landed out at sea on a shortfall of Gravitas in the Atlantic for its second time. And lastly, SpaceX launched their latest flock of 51 Starlink birds on Thursday morning from the West Coast, using a brand spanking new Falcon booster for this internal mission, showing their transition of trust from new boosters for customers to flight proven ones. She christened herself during re entry and touched down on Of Course I Still Love You, bobbing on the Pacific Ocean. Starlink internet service is coming to Air Baltic. The company selected SpaceX to bring connectivity to their fleet of Airbuses and will be available to their passengers faux free. Elon tweeting, Starlink and aircraft feels the same as high-speed connection on the ground. Well, I think that just about wraps up this week's episode. Thank you so much for stopping by and catching up with me. I want to give a very special thanks to those of you supporting the channel. I love you guys. But everyone, make sure to have a nominal weekend. And until next time, God bless. Godspeed. Godspeed.